And so many people don't deal with themselves in that moment and face what you said also, which was a very key thing in entrepreneurialism, harsh truths. There are so many harsh truths that come with entrepreneurialism and you are not going to have somebody that's going to rescue you. You're not going to have a big wig investor that's going to see you for the amazing businessman or woman you are and put the money in your account to where you can be okay for tomorrow. You're not going to have that moment where someone sees that you've unlocked the ability to change the world overnight. And these are all your dream board moments. Welcome, badass entrepreneurs. It's time to hear the world's movers, shakers, and difference makers spill their secrets for unlimited success. So strap in for Badass Entrepreneurs Only begins now. Hey, I'm Coach Dan Gordon. And I'm Rodney Waits. And welcome to For Badass Entrepreneurs Only. And Rodney, what's the title of our show today? The title of our show today, Dan, is something that we both know, and it's Dream Boards Are Totally Stupid, and you know it. That's right. If you have a dream board, I would urge you to crumple it up and throw it away. Or mark all over it. You didn't do that. <laughs> You're right. And if somebody encourages you to make a dream board, tell them that dream boards are totally stupid and you know it. So let's talk about the things that entrepreneurs do to distract themselves, right? I mean, if dream boards worked, then every preschooler would be a billionaire, right? Because they cut out pictures out of magazines and paste them onto pieces of paper. And the problem is just in our humanity, 75% of our thinking is based on not doing things that could be potentially harmful. And only 25% of our thinking is based on doing things that will challenge us, right? Like stepping into the fire. Yeah. And how stupid is it, Dan, that it's so easy to manipulate someone to think that's the key that they're missing. Like when you're a coach and you don't really know what you're doing and you're brand new to the space and you're renting a Lamborghini and you've got a big house. Of course, you're going to tell somebody to go and build a dream board because number one, you never did it. So of course, they're going to think that's going to get them there. But it's also something that they could think is so simple. It was the missing key to what they were looking for. Right. The law of attraction. First of all, it's not a law. It's an idea. Gravity is a law. Like if you drop a glass, it's going to hit the ground. That's a law. It cannot be disputed. If you dream of something happening, it may or may not happen. And really, the dream uh, isn't even the beginning. The dream is a subset. It's the action that you take. And I get it, right? Like, So the movie The Secret came out, and who's the guy who wrote Chicken Soup for the Soul? He talked about his dream board. Like, that's where all this started. Yeah. And so he made a dream board that had a picture of a house on it, and it was packed away in his, in his closet. And his son pulls the dream board out and goes, what's this? And, and he goes, oh, it's this dream board thing I, I made a long time ago. And not only, Rodney, not only did he have the type of house that was on his dream board, he had that exact house. He bought the house without even realizing it. Now, that's a lovely story. And I think that's what started people like, oh, that's cool. I just got to make a dream board and I'll get the house that I want. What he didn't talk about was the 3 a.m. pacing the halls back and forth his wife saying, hey, when are you going to get a real job? Like, are you insane? This is not working. This chicken soup for the soul bullshit is not going anywhere. Like, we, we are failing. You've got to do something. Like, give this thing up. It's not working. Yes. And maybe he did talk about that, but it was clearly edited out of the movie because that didn't move their narrative along. So I want to make a movie. Like, there's a secret. I want to make a movie called The Dirty Secret. The yeah. Dirty Secret is all the things that we have to do in order to move our vision forward and actually bring into existence what we want to create. So the dirty secret yeah. is that there's failure. Okay. We've talked about failure. We pushed through the last steps. We're talking about not only acknowledging the failure, but letting it kind of define you for that moment. And you taking that and saying, Hey, this isn't what's going to be me going forward. I'm going to have to go through these walls. I'm going to have to go to this point. Well, the dirty secret is that there is no secret at all, right? There's no one size fits all. Like it's all total bullshit. And it's to put you in this position or on this pedestal that you're the entrepreneur who knows how to unleash all the other entrepreneurs when really you don't know the half of the battles that they watch and the half of the battles that they're actually struggling through. I mean, am I right? Yeah, it, it's perfectly said. And let's talk about what those dirty secrets are. What are the things that you have done, Rodney, to distract yourself 
from doing the hard stuff. And while you're distracting yourself, you're telling yourself that you're actually doing something. I have built robust, beautiful vehicles or websites oh, here that we go, have right? made me look like I'm just the guy who has it all and I've got it figured out and I've got this big team and there's this illustrious view of me as massive Fortune 500 on the way entrepreneur when really I needed to stick to phone calls and appointments and creating more time to actually get better at my craft. Mm. Like I was distracting myself with these minute details that are going to come with the process, but I felt good and I felt like I was chasing productivity because I had a funnel or because I had this huge way of presenting myself to be like what I didn't even know the half of how to become. Yeah. And so while you were building the website, were you saying, oh, look, I'm distracting myself. I know I should be doing something else. It kind of felt like, you know, I'd listened to the people that said, build a dream board and have all these things, you know, like in the front of your mind and it'll just come and the art of manifestation is going to just bring all these things to you. It felt like I was unlocking that next little piece and I got to follow in their footsteps. But really, it just put me in so many different circles. It wasn't even funny. And in fact, I became a perfectionist and I didn't release half the things that I built. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about perfectionism. Oh, absolutely. And you're going to go through that. It's going to be a part of what you actually find to be something that helps you get whatever master website or master medium that you're going to have be the center of all of your traffic. Because here's the thing. I built all these websites and paid these people like 20K to pay this guy to not only do a website, but also these really well put together videos that were structured and had the lapel mic. And I was all, you know, pretty up in the background and it literally got zero traffic. And when I say zero, I mean like probably zero to a hundred views per month because it was still just this warm idea that I thought was going to become overnight credible because of the way it looked, man, that is exactly what it wasn't. So the person that you're talking about in their basement, pumping out this content, pumping out these ideas, they're going to find that path to where they're going to get all the viewership not because of the way they look, but because of how they develop themselves on the way. Mm. Oh, I, I love that right there. It, it's that development, right? Yeah. We all want something outside of ourselves. So, so I, like I have a client who's this slamming uh, real estate agent and she doesn't quite see it yet, right? So she started talking about the business cards that she wanted to buy, these really expensive business cards with a gold leaf. And I'm like, whoa, hold on. Like, you are trying to use the business card as a shield from being authentic, right? You're afraid that people aren't going to respect you. So you're using this business card because you're unwilling to be super honest. Right. Tough right? stuff. There, man. It, it is. Right? And from all angles, because having an average business card means that you have to shine, means that you can't hide behind a business card and say, oh, look how great I am. I got to be great because of the business card. Yep. Instead, it is her developing herself as a real estate agent. So people just talking to her are like, oh, holy shit, you are just knocking out of the park awesome. Yeah. And I got to tell you, a business card, a website, anything outside of you is never going to do it. What will do it is exactly what Rodney just said. It's putting the time in and doing shitty work over and over again until it starts to get good. Yeah. Gary Vaynerchuk. Chuck has like this huge thing that he says, you have to eat shit for like the first three to four years. Like you got to put your head down and you got to do all these things. And even though obviously that's a part of whatever grand scheme that's going on with the whole way that's viewed and it could yeah. be a bad in itself, right? Mm -hmm. It's actually essentially true. You do need to have that blinder focus to where you're like, okay, I'm going to go through this no matter what it looks like. Like, for example, the most successful I've ever been in real estate was in the height of a market that we just tapped for the past three or four years. Go figure, just like so many other realtors. But what I did that was consistent and what required discipline every day instead of motivation or inspiration was I would literally point the phone at my face and be in front of a new house every single other day and give the tip every single morning. I would point the phone at my face and be there for those people. And it looked terrible, Dan. It was like the worst content ever. It got so much traction and I've yeah. been business off a bit. My degree is in media, right? So coming up in college, like everything was about perfection and yeah. making it look great. And so it became really clear to me that making things perfect was my dream board. 
Like I'm going to do things that will make, that, that will change people's opinions of me. So I don't have to suffer through the feeling of failure, uncertainty, lack of confidence. Like that's what you're trying to avoid by creating a dream board. Right? I'm going to put these pictures up. I'm going to put it up in my office and then I'm going to think about it and I'm going to manifest it. Bull fucking shit. Right. Okay? You're going to get out there and you're going to fall on your ass and people are going to tell you doing it wrong. And you're going to go, no, I'm going to do it my way. And then you're going to find out you are wrong. Yep. Or maybe you are doing it. It doesn't matter because it all becomes fodder for new knowledge. Fodder. I don't think I've ever heard that. I love <laughs> yeah, that. Like, like cannon fodder. No, I thought it was like mutter and fodder, but no, it's fodder. <laughs> <laughs> so there are so many things that when I'm coaching, and working with people, most of what I talk about is how I fail. First of all, because I want to help my clients avoid those things. And second of all, it's because everything that I learned in those experiences. And then also the things I did that seemed counterintuitive that I didn't think were going to work because I tried all the things that worked. And when the things that worked stopped working, it's time to start doing the things that don't work because they work. So I just started giving a lot of things away and just talking about the things that I know much like you shooting those videos. Yeah. Now that shouldn't have worked because it wasn't beautiful and there wasn't a funnel and there wasn't, right? Right. But the reason that it works is because it's authentic and that's what people buy. I want to tell you a story about, like I have a cousin who works for the NFL. He's a producer. The NFL would do a post-game show, but what they would do is they take all the footage of the show and they'd edit it down and they you know record the interviews. They build this show and the next day they'd put it out. Well, meanwhile, these dumb little YouTubers pointing their phones at themselves in the TTV are cranking out a post-game show seven minutes after the game's over. And so what the NFL had to do was completely trash all of their professionalism and just get the content out there. So powerful. And it, it's very counterintuitive, like because their dream board was making a beautiful show. It's what they had always done. Right? People aren't going to respect them or watch the show if it's crap or if it looks like crap. Right? That's the thinking. Mm-hmm. Right? I'm not going to get what I want if I don't make a dream board and manifest it. Well, that's the thinking. But all that stuff is outside of you. Once again, you know, it seems like we're always coming down to the same track, Rodney. Step it into the fire. Right before this, I was on a call. So I've been in a business group for a long time, over a decade. And the organization just changed hands. A person who bought it is a friend of mine. And they asked me to be on a board of advisors about the new direction for this group. These networking groups, there's like a lot of rules and how you pass referrals and who can be in the group and who can't and what happens if you don't do things right. So meanwhile, especially since since COVID, everything has changed. And now we've recognized that most of our interactions can be done virtually. Yes, they can. And so that means that younger people are not seeing as much value in face-to-face interactions. And so here I am on this call and they are talking about all of the rules and regulations and should we uh, amend this rule and nuance this rule. And I listened to this for 45 minutes and I said, we are blockbuster video in the age of Netflix. And we are sitting here and we are talking about how to organize the VHS tapes to make our store the most profitable. Mm -hmm. You know, what we don't realize is that we can't be talking about that. We got to be talking about that this model is going away. It doesn't work. And it was very hard for the people to hear that because their dream board is all the rules and the regulations and how it works and, you know, the color of your badge and what that means. And if you can bring a guest and what the guest can say, like all of these rules that are foundational to this organization that feel really comfortable. Yeah, I'm sure. Because they're used to them, right? It's something they've seen that they feel progress in. That's the hard thing is that your dream board might not be a dream board. Your dream board just might be something that you're used to. It might be something that has been working for a long time, but if you're not unwilling to be in a state of evolution and challenging your own beliefs and being in a mindset of what are the younger people attracted to in business and what it is authenticity and and inclusiveness, 
in instant information. Yeah. And so let's talk about how do you recognize, Rodney, when you're actually building a dream board and you think you're doing something productive? How do you know? I'm usually one to jump all over a question, but I, I just a, a million things pop up. So number one, I don't think there's anything wrong with why you started it, right? Like obviously we're both going to be the ones to shatter their bubble and say that it's not going to work, but there's nothing wrong with knowing what you want, right? I think that you're going to know you're becoming productive when you've got your eyes on a target, when you're no longer sitting there thinking about something that you might want or something that you might see as possible for you, when you're coming up with a way to convict yourself daily of a purpose or convict yourself daily and reselling yourself daily, that's a habit that's healthy. I think that's extremely important. And I've talked to salesmen all over the world to be just that simple. And that is a part of their authenticity now is because they now get to say like, hey, I know what I want and I know that I'm going to have to make a hundred phone calls a day or a hundred cold emails or LinkedIn messages or Instagram messages. It doesn't matter because I'm going to find who my a thousand true fans are. I'm going to find who I can actually pour into that can actually see what I want. So instead of making it all about attracting what they want by seeing it in front of them, They're going out and asking people actively how they can get closer to it. That brings up something in my mind, which is as you're doing that, there's a lot of discomfort and uncertainty in that. Always. Yeah. Right. So if you're working on anything in your business where you are not feeling discomfort, you're not afraid, you're not worried, you're not envisioning failure, you are building a dream board. Without even knowing it. Yeah. Unless you're feeling uncomfortable, afraid, and you have the fear of failure in you, you're building a dream board. When you do the things that you don't want to do, then you're headed in the right direction. And that's why we're drawn to dream boards and things like that, because there's certainty in it. Like, I am certain that if I make a dream board, I'm going to produce something. I'm going to reach my goal. Right? There's no danger in it. I'm not going to fail. But by the same token, I'm not actually doing something. And yet, if I actually do something, how do I know if it's a good risk or a bad idea? I mean, I would say experience, right? Like your risk tolerance is going to come from a lot of what you're afraid to try, but then you try to an certain extent. But then there's things that you just got to trust your gut on, right? Like I actually have gut feelings all the time and I'm like, well, that's kind of reinventing the wheel or, well, that's kind of doing something where it's not disruptive, not out of the box, but it's something that's stupid. So know the difference, right? Like have that discernment to be like, this is something that could be a great reward, but there's always other ways to get to it. So don't just act on it, right? Like you're talking about not letting your emotions control you. Think logically while you're also thinking of it in a risk tolerance way. There's a bridge. There's some kind of compromise there. There's something that you can kind of think of and say, well, I know that the blindfold is probably a bad idea, but if I take it off, I can probably make it across and not get hit by the traffic. Yeah. So it's like, you know, you've got to be that judge of what's going to be best for you. That's why it's not a one size fits all. That's why you can't follow mentors and have one exact leader and be like, my life is going to be just like them. No, you get to live vicariously. You get to have some sort of insight on their pitfalls and hopefully get to avoid some of those, but you're meant to fail. You're meant to have your experiences. I think that's one of the largest parts of entrepreneurialism is discovering where your personal boundaries are, like knowing your limitations. I love that. That's exactly what it is. And you can't know your limitations until you're beyond them. When my dad was dying and I was in in Chicago with him, my brother comes in, says, I got to talk to you. We go into next room, he sits down. And he says, mom has cancer, right? So my mom lived in St. Louis. My dad was in Chicago. I'm sitting there watching my dad die. Now I find out that my mom has cancer. Okay, now what do I do? Do I stay with my dad while he's dying? Do I go visit my mom? How bad's the cancer? What's going to happen? And so all of this stuff is swirling around in my head, right? I'm trying to come up with the right answer, right? Maybe I just go, you know, because it's a short flight from Chicago to St. Louis. So maybe I just go visit mom for a week. And then come back to see dad. But, but then what if dad dies during that week? So fortunately that day, there was a social worker there. So I thought, ah, you know what? I think I'll just talk it out with a disinterested third party, right? That'll help. So I sit down with her 
And I opened my mouth to start talking. And instead of talking, I just burst into tears. And I dropped my head on the table and I'm sobbing uncontrollably. And I look up at her and I say, I am not strong enough to handle this. And that was the truth. I don't imagine myself as that person. I don't imagine myself as somebody who is in a situation that is beyond what he can handle. I believe that with enough thought, and effort. I can handle anything, but I couldn't handle that. And that's what all of that stress and energy and all that shit that was inside of my body just came flying out talking with her. And that was my limitation. And this is what life shows you. Like when you play big, life is going to show you what your limitations are and you're going to find them. And it's super painful, but then you know where they are. I am stretched beyond what I can handle. And, you know, frankly, my dream board was saying, I can handle this. Not a problem. So as entrepreneurs, we want to think that we're superhuman. And that becomes its own distraction. Our ability to persevere and to get back up again when other people stay down is beautiful. And yet there's times where that is its own distraction. And just like making a dream board and you don't realize in the moment, man, I am wasting my time. My resistance to going into my heart and going, man, I am really lonely and I am really afraid being here. It's okay to see things as distractions when you get to that point. Yeah. And a lot of the things that you're talking about just are so heartfelt and they're real, right? Like a lot of people are not to this point. They're not to where they understand that their vulnerabilities can actually free them to this point to see that when they have that ability to see where their limitations are, it can truly unlock them as people, right? Like it's so funny. And it reminds me of the first time I heard somebody say, there's power in being powerless. And I really thought about it and I needed to hear that in that moment in my life. I've always attested to be Superman. I tell my girl all the time, Like I'm Superman. Just like you just told us as entrepreneurs, we are super people. We are extraordinary. All these things, we have limits. We have limitations. That's why we have to remain humble in those times. Like those two examples you gave, really something that everyone goes through in their own way. And you can attest that if it wasn't for that moment where you surrendered to that feeling it probably would have gotten worse. Mm-hmm. And so many people don't deal with themselves in that moment and face what you said also, which was a very key thing in entrepreneurialism, harsh truths. There are so many harsh truths that come with entrepreneurialism and you are not going to have somebody that's going to rescue you. You're not going to have a big wig investor that's going to see you for the amazing businessman or woman you are and put the money in your account to where you can be okay for tomorrow. You're not going to have that moment where someone sees that You've unlocked the ability to change the world overnight. And these are all your dream board moments. I see people on like Shark Tank, right? Just giving away the farm because they're looking for these guys to save them. That's exactly what they're doing. I think Shark Tank's a really cool show. And my suggestion would be go to go on Shark Tank, get an offer and turn it down. Because now you have leverage to use that, right? But if you ever watch Shark Tank, you look in the eyes of the entrepreneurs and they're so desperate. Like it's so sad, yeah. right? They look like starving people. And, yeah. and it's like someone says, hey, I'll give you the sandwich if you sign over your house. And the person's like, okay, that's a dream board moment, right? Oh, this person's going to come and save me. And I love what you said, Rodney. No one is coming to save you. You're looking for the adult in the room. You're the adult. You're the one. When you point the phone at your face and you're not saying anything yeah. worth value, you're not. You're not saying anything at all, but you're getting better at pushing through that limitation. Mm-hmm. Like we're getting better at pushing through that ability to add value to people's lives. Like we've had experiences that have led us to be here. We're not the know-it-alls in the room, but if we can get one person to listen to it, they'll tell them what they could do with it. Yeah. Well, it better be more than one, Roddy. I had an experience this morning and I'll tell you this because when things start happening, you'll notice that they're happening. It's like, it seems odd. 
So I, I can't say specifically what it is once again, but somebody in the media business said, we're on a call and we had to wrap up and he said, Hey, I'm having a problem with, and he mentioned somebody who is very successful in the media business. And I want your advice on how to deal with him. I'm like, great, I'll set up another call. And then we got off Zoom and I said, holy shit, this guy wants my advice about how to deal with this guy? Wait a second, did that really just happen? And other things are happening like that too. And they, they seem to be coming out of nowhere. And I can tell you, this is how it starts happening. You go through just so much crap and there's just no indication that anything is ever going to work out. That it just seems like it's just another year of trudging through and you're trying stuff and, and like nothing's happening. And then suddenly just weird stuff just starts coming seemingly out of nowhere. And I really wish I had a 12 point plan that I could sell you to take you there. And I don't, and nobody does. So if you're buying a 12 point plan to get there, then you are talking to a scammer. Welcome to your dream board moment. That's right. Yeah. So here's the thing. When you finish your dream board and you put it up on the wall and then you look at it and say, oh, that was a big fucking waste of time. It is and it isn't. Because what happened is it brought you to the awareness that you spent time doing something that was easy, that where you allowed yourself to believe you were actually doing something to move yourself forward and you weren't. But then that time comes back to you because the next dream board moment, you'll say, okay, this is one of those things. This feels too easy. It's too good. It's something that I know I'm going to do just because I want to avoid doing the hard work. Not again. That's it. And it's never again, right? Yeah. Those right. Those moments where you're like, oh, never again. If you're listening to this and you think that you've had so many not again moments, it's going to turn into never again. Again, that's your own version of a dream board right there because it's going to happen again. Yeah. It may not happen in that exact way. It may not happen to that exact measure, but it's going to. And you're required to have it happen in order to get to the next moment and the next moment. Yeah. I am thinking of three coaches that I hired and that were just terrible. And each time after the coach, I was like, I am never doing that again. Yeah. Sitting there I was. Like, how did that happen? Same. Yeah. I had one person and they like were looking for the way to see that they had reached me. And they said, there you have it. That was yours. That was what it was meant to be right there. You just, you locked it in. That is exactly what the key was right there. Because they watched the way I reacted to having some newfound realization. Uh, and they wanted to take credit for it. And they wanted to assume the ownership of what the experience and the questions that got me there to receive, not that person. Ooh, I'm going to have to start using that. It's good, right? <laughs> it's not made up. It is true. And it costs money. <laughs> so there you go. <laughs> you know, it's, it's, it's why I focus on sales. Like I am so worried about somebody feeling scammed by me. I guess it's because I've had that experience with others and I'm just, I'm always really paranoid until my client starts earning their money back that they're paying me. Yeah. And I'm always like checking in with them. They're like, okay, how many calls have you made? Like, what, you know, have you closed any deals? Like, what, you know, what happened? And, and they're like, oh, I've been lazy. Like, no, you can't be lazy because my reputation is on the line. Right. I've equipped you. If you don't use it, then I'm a fraud. <laughs> well, yeah, you know, yeah. and I know I'm pushing my shit on them, but, you know, ultimately I know if they make their money back, they're going to feel better about having worked with me. Right. And I'll feel better about it. But that's my little paranoia. And maybe that's my dream board. Maybe it's okay if somebody hires me and they don't make their money back. Yeah. Like maybe they get something else. Maybe they get some other value. But man, that's really scary. Like I have that ability to be in the coaching space as well. And I look at it like this. If I'm saying something that seems like it's hard to resonate with them, I'm like, well, maybe I'm just overcomplicating everything. Maybe in fact... I haven't discovered a way to make them productive. I've confused them even more. And that's my dream board moment. Because I'm like, yeah, maybe I can do it, but maybe I'm not duplicatable. Maybe I'm not able to see things 
as simple as they should be. When I'm sitting here telling and being an advocate of making everything simple, I'm the most complicated person. What is that? I mean, the moment you get locked into the idea that something is about you, failure is imminent. So I was talking with someone and he was very self-sacrificing. He's like, I just give away too much. I just want to help people. And I said, I, I bet you really don't like people who are self-involved, who are just in it for themselves. He goes, oh yeah, you know, like I can't stand people like that. And I said, well, whether you are self-sacrificing or self-involved, it's the same thing. Because what's the key word there? Self. So, you are thinking about yourself. That's powerful. Yeah, right. And, you know, there's there's what I call the three silent killers of success, right? Sleep stress, and productivity. Now, badass entrepreneurs never get enough sleep. We all have way too much stress, and that puts our productivity in the crapper. I found something that beats the silent killers. It's a technology that lives on your phone. Now, I, I know this sounds crazy, but it's sound waves, sound waves that put your brain into states of relaxation and focus. Now, when I first heard about this, I just thought it was bullshit, right? But then I heard that this company, they're called Nucalm, N-U-C-A-L-M. Nucalm is being used by the Army, by U.S. Special Forces, the FBI, professional football teams, pilots, surgeons are using Nucalm instead of anesthesia. And what's his name? Uh, Tony Robbins just jumped on board with Nucalm, right? So I thought, at the very least, I got to try this. So I, I downloaded the app, I put it on my phone, and it, it just sounds like music. But oh my God, after one session, I was on fire. 20 minutes of Nucom was like two cups of coffee. And then on the other side, I use Nucom at night, and it puts me out like a light. I wake up in the morning, shot out of a cannon. Now, if you want a free week of Nucom, it's super simple. Just text the word CALM, C-A-L-M, to this number, 213-409-8366, 213-409-8366, and text the word CALM, C-A-L-M. Get more sleep, feel less stress, and blow your productivity out of the water. Just text CALM, C-A-L-M, to this number, 213-409-8366, and get a free week of new CALM. Free. Okay, so sorry for going off like, like this. I'm just super fired up about it. Let's get back into this. And so all of these little dream board moments that we're talking about are those times where you're distracting yourself from the work that will move you forward. And that work is always going to be uncomfortable. It's always going to be fraught with fear and visions of failure. And yet that's where the action is. Being self-sacrificing isn't actually sacrificing. It's a distraction. It is in doing that work that you move yourself forward as an entrepreneur. And that is all. <laughs> and that is all. <laughs> I don't know, man. Have we beat this one to death? We did beat this one to death, but I'd love to beat it again because it's 100% something that it really even taught me something. I mean, don't you love how there's a selfish aspect even in giving true value? Like it reinforces, it's like the incubator moment, right? Like it 100% mm. gives you that ability to see it again. And we all need that. Yeah. We see it all the time in books. We see it in movies. We see it in all kinds of people's lives mm -hmm. and their experiences. Reliving it over and over and just mm -hmm. reconvincing yourself that you don't have it all figured out. You're supposed to have these things happen. You are not alone. I mean, as redundant as those things sound, they're free. Yeah. Let's say again, Rodney, dream boards are totally stupid. And you know it. And you know it. A dream board is a wonderful break, right? It's not doing anything. It's not helping you, but don't pretend that you're being productive. You know, look, just go sit down and watch TV. You know, hang out, read a book, like just whatever, take a break. I'm going to give some advice here. I want you to tell me if it's totally food because this <laughs> is so good for me. And I think that this is something that I've actually learned with coaches that had a lot of great intent. And in fact, one is in my life right now and has never asked me for a dime. And it's not because he's unafraid and it's not because he's afraid. It's because he just feels the true value is in the mission that he has, which is to find people of 
whatever type of qualities he sees in me. He talked to me about stacking wins and he talked to me about these moments that are outside of the dream board moments to where you need to remember in those times where you feel defeated, in those times where you feel mental exhaustion, in those times where you feel being spread too thin, or you know exactly what all three of those feel like. So look back at what you've done that you've actually recorded and given yourself the attaboy or a girl for and think like, okay, well, there was that productivity already. I know there's more to come. So I'm going to just embellish this moment here and I am going to go enjoy TV or I am going to go give more time to the son or the daughter, or I am going to actually take a walk and just listen to something that's not leadership and self-development <laughs> and cranking manifestation. Like it doesn't yeah. be that all the time in order to enjoy it and to learn from it. I've learned things in fiction books. I've learned things yeah. in children's movies. Like there's, yeah. So much to attain from all the things around you if you're really looking for it. And that's the key. So Hmm. it's a way to do that. And I've done that. And I've got a notebook that I keep and don't know where in the world it is because I've got probably 15 that do not have an open space in them. (laughs) And they've got wins. And all these things I can get to reflect on now when I'm in that moment of feeling that just loathe of myself or that ability to be lost inside of the very process that I claim to be in love with. That's terrific. It is giving yourself that break, right? I think we found something here. You know, this is something that I hadn't really thought about until we started talking about, but maybe dream boards are really just about taking a break. They are. It's a wonderful break. It's not manifesting, no. It's not actually creating something, and that's fine. Just recognize that treating yourself kindly, that you need downtime, and whatever it is, it's a part of the entrepreneurial journey. It has to be. And yet dream boards are still totally stupid. So yeah, that's it. <laughs> it's, it's been beautiful. Rodney, tell me about your radio show. My radio show is in fact now only a podcast. Ah, so My dream board moments were being in a perfect studio and having the ability to feel as if I was at a high enough level to be accepted, to be mm. seen as a great creator. But it's now in fact, Dan, my podcast, and I'm going to run it just from this very background you see here. I just released Beautiful. three new videos, ah. and people can go and watch those, and they can also go and listen to those. It's on all the podcast platforms that are fun, but it's called Impact is Greater Than Influence, and it's just the greater than sign. It's not spelled out. And I've had some really good feedback from it, and I've had a great time. Okay, good, good. Thanks so much, Rodney. Thank you, my friend. Until next time. Bye-bye. Hey, one last thing. If you're feeling stuck in business life, wherever, download my book, Jumping the Gap, Kill Your Story and Take Action. In this book, you'll see how the stories that you tell yourself are stopping yourself from living your greatest life. Just text the word GAP, G-A-P, to this number, 213-409-8366. 213-409-8366 and text the word GAP. It's a short read. It's fun. It's easy. And if you hate reading like I do, you can grab the audiobook. It's at that same link. Just text the word GAP, G-A-P, to 213-409-8366. You'll love it. All right, that's it. Go out there and be badass today.